Package Wrap PSA, Customer Onboarding Video Series, Tax Codes. Tax codes are one of the questions that folks typically have, sometimes when it's a little too late. So today we're going to talk about where the tax codes are entered, what the default and the customer tax codes are, where to look in QuickBooks for existing tax codes, and how Packet Trap PSA and QuickBooks link for tax codes. Once you've logged into your Packet Trap PSA account, navigate to the settings, the general settings, and then over to tax codes. Here you'll see we have no tax codes. But before we add a new tax code, let's talk about where we actually find tax codes within QuickBooks if we already have them. Log into QuickBooks and go to the Vendor Center. Here you'll see your vendors on the left hand side. We've got to have a vendor to be able to apply taxes. Here our test is the state of Colorado. Once we have the vendor, we'll need to also make sure we have the tax as an item. Let's go to lists, item list, and here are all of our items. Here I can see Colorado State tax is an item, a sales tax, at 7.4%. So we're set there. Let's navigate back to Packet Trap and create a tax code. So the first field is our tax code name. Our tax code name is actually the item in QuickBooks. We're going to go ahead and paste in the Colorado State tax. Here again is simply the rate that you want to charge for your sales tax. 7.4% and our tax agency. Our tax agency in this case was the state of Colorado. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste the state of Colorado in from my vendor list in QuickBooks. And now I'm going to make this my default tax rate. This means anytime there's a taxable item, by default, we'll tax it at the Colorado State rate. Once we click Save, we can see that the Colorado State tax has been added at 7.4%, and it is our default tax rate. Let's navigate over to our customers. We're going to pull up our ABC customer and take a look at the bottom of the customer overview, and we'll see this customer is now going to be taxed our default tax rate, which is Colorado State tax. If we create customers prior to having a tax rate, we won't be able to select that default tax rate. Therefore, if you create those customers, then the tax rate, you'll need to go back and update the default tax rate for the customers. Now, if we edit this customer, and we had a second tax rate, it'll show up in our drop down here so that we can actually charge this customer different tax if they happen to fall outside of the state of Colorado, for example. The other place you'll find taxes is within the items. Let's navigate to settings, items, and pull up the blue widget. Here you can see the status is taxable by default. So when we add this item to a ticket, it's going to be taxable. Now that means it's taxable at the customer default tax rate. In this case, our demo has a single tax rate, which is the Colorado State tax. Therefore, this should be taxable when we add it to a ticket, simply because it's taxable by default. When you import your items, you can choose to make it taxable or not taxable by default. Now let's go take a look at what this might look like if we're adding material to a ticket. Let's navigate to the Tickets tab. And this ticket 998, let's go ahead and add materials to it. As the materials dialog pops up, we'll select the item. And we'll see below, by default, this item is taxable. Again, this will be taxable by the customer or default tax rate. To select on a per item basis to not tax this item, simply just turn off the button. Click Save, and we're back to our ticket list. 
Let's drill back into the ticket. Let's go to our billing tab. And here again, we'll see some taxable information. So here's the blue widget we added. It's taxable. And we'll see that we've applied the tax code, Colorado State Tax. Once in the billing tab, if you decide not to tax an item or to tax an item that's not taxable by default, simply just click in the tax box and that item will then be taxable. If you want to change your tax code at this level as well, we can select a different tax rate. So basically what will happen once you close that work order and import it into QuickBooks, we'll send the tax over looking at a vendor of, in this case, State of Colorado, and the item, if we go to our item list, will be the Colorado State Tax. Of course, you want to adjust that for your city or region. If you have multiple taxes, you'll also see the multiple tax rates here that you use in Packet Trap. Last but not least, if you don't have any tax rates in QuickBooks, maybe it's a French install, if you create that tax agency and the tax rate or code in Packet Trap, the first time we move over a ticket to create an invoice in QuickBooks, will automatically create the agency or vendor and the item for tax rate. So I hope that short tutorial helps you better understand where the tax codes are entered in Packet Trap, what the default tax and default customer tax codes are, where to look in QuickBooks to find your existing tax codes, and how Packet Trap, PSA, and QuickBooks link together for taxes. If you have questions or need more information, please feel free to contact sales at packettrap.com or support at packettrap.com.